everybody, it's Janet and Ed and I are lucky enough to be at Carol Ann's house. Hey Carol Ann, how you doing? I'm great. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for letting us come and see your place. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> um, some of the members uh, who may be watching this will recognize Carol Ann as one of our judges and she is a member of the View Royal Garden Club. Yes. And I've been to some of their little get-togethers and parlor shows and and, and I really encourage going to those because they're really fun. So really, uh, we're really happy to be here and you have a fabulous place, so please tell us about where we are and, and uh, what we're looking at here. Sure, um, I live deep within Esquimalt Harbour, um, so this is a little bay. Uh, you, you probably can't really see the water through the trees, but it's out there. Um, sometimes I can hear the, the ships and the, from the Navy um, as they call in the mornings. Um, so first I have some new roses and um, I'm really happy with them. Um, this one here is called Rolled Doll. It's a da new David Austin and I planted it in a pot. I've never planted roses in pots before and I'm really pleased with um, how well it's doing. Um, I first planted it, I cut it all back, and I counted at least 30 new buds. So I think it's happy here. No, it's beautiful. Um, this is another one I bought last year. Um, it's called Teasing Georgia, and it didn't do very well till I put it in the pot. Huh. And again, um, it's doing really well. It's got um, beautiful flowers. Yeah. And then I bought um, this one, it's called Carding Mill. Again, in a pot and it's happy there. And that one's a Canadian tire rose. It's and it's lovely. The colors the are color. beautiful. I yeah. love the foliage. Yeah, it's dark. Um, it's, yeah, it's dark, so it's a nice contrast to the others. Mm -hmm. Maybe it likes the depth of the soil, like Maybe. we were talking earlier. Maybe. Yeah. No, it looks beautiful. And you got your petunias. I call those nose sucking flowers myself. Oh. Because, you know, if you stick them on your nose and you go like this, it sticks to you. The right. kids find that very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> very pretty. It must be a lovely place to sit. It is, except often um, it gets too hot, so I actually like to sit out here um, later in the day. And at night I can actually see the stars because there's not a lot of light. So it's a, a nice place to sit. Beautiful. Um, so this is, my, if you will, my front deck, right. and then we can go and look at some other things. Okay, let's go have a look. So when we first moved into this house, um, I called it the goat track. You could kind of walk like this along the sides of the house and then there was quite a cliff. So after we'd been here about a year, um, first we did renos inside and then we started working on the outside. So um, we had a fellow come in and he actually built this wall for us. So he came in with a big excavator and placed all of these rocks. Um, so what it meant was I gained a lot more garden space um, and I was now able to walk around the house um, so uh, then I started planting um, on the wall and put little pockets of soil so this rosemary that's up here there was actually five um, little wee pots um, and I bought uh, trailing rosemary mm -hmm. and so it started to cascade down the wall and the bees and the hummingbirds love it because yeah. when it's in bloom it's stunning um, and then I have some of like the hens and chicks and so mm -hmm. it started to follow all the crevices yeah um, and then the same thing um, little pots because it was a big expanse um, and the first year or so I had to be really careful with watering because they weren't established but once they started to getting established they really take they look after itself now there is um, a sprinkler system but it comes and it trickles down the rock um, and this is primarily is uh, stunning in the springtime mm -hmm. so obviously that's not the time of year we're in so it's mostly green right now but you can still see um, perhaps what it was and lots of different shades of green. Yes. You know, yes. so it's very and nice. And then a few things start to come through from the other side. So right. this is um, an anemone. It's called September Charm. So it's kind of nodding in the breeze. Yeah. And then um, as things seeded, they started to self-seed into the um, 
into the gravel. Mm -hmm. So these ones are happy here. So all this stuff, and I just left it because yeah. I kind of like it. Yeah, no, it looks fabulous. Yeah. You'll have to come back in the springtime. Love to. Well, who knows what we'll be doing next year, Ed. <laughs> Should we go around the corner and have a look at your hydrangea? Sure. So this is a, a huge hydrangea. Um, it's a lace cap. It's called Blue Wave. And I love the color. Like, it's such an intense color. Um, and what's nice is I've tried to prune this a third, a third, a third, so that I get a, a continual bloom time. So some bloom a lot earlier, um, so some of them are gone, mm -hmm. um, but they still have some interest. Yeah. Um, but then the, the ones that are pruned harder um, are still coming, so uh, it's gorgeous. It's, it's a monster. And you know, hydrangea, I've always heard these stories, because I only got a hydrangea last year and it's pink. Okay. And I've always heard about, you know, hydrangea takes up the water, it takes on the color of what minerals are in the soil. Is that true? Because I've seen some that may start off pink and then they go blue or the, the opposite. Do you have to put like things in the soil to keep you, their color? You can. Um, it, when we go into the back, I'll show you exactly that happened. Oh, yeah. I have three in the back and they are three different colors. <laughs> um, they're exactly the same kind. Um, you would think the soil would be the same, but um, you can amend the soil, but I just just leave it. So you're lucky that this stays blue then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 It's happy here. Yeah. Very pretty. Thank you. So this is a little planter by my front door, and it gets deep, deep shade, like it gets no sun. Um, so this is actually oh, this is oxalis. It's overwintered, probably six years. Wow. Every year it just keeps coming back. Um, and then some uh, the begonias. This one's called Piketty. And then I put in some um, fuchsia. Yeah. And then a coleus, just a, a bit of color contrast. Nice. And then I have some curly willow because I had a tree last year that had to be removed. Mm. And when they felled the tree, they broke, it fell down and smashed my curly willow. So I kept as much as I could, <laughs> so I at least could put some in, Stick it in um, here and there. It, yeah. Oh. But uh, I don't nice. know. It gives a little pop of color, and I especially like this coleus. Yeah. No, that's that really nice green. Yeah. It really makes things. Okay. So I have another um, pot here, and I've planted uh, is this lilac-colored uh, lobelia. So again, it's a nice contrast. And Janet was mentioning earlier about not being able to find um, uh, begonias. begonias that are so shade. favorable for shade. Yeah. Um, and last year, several of mine overwintered in the bed. Wow. Um, yeah. So there's some tiny little ones. I wouldn't maybe have chosen this color, but um, those overwintered. Yeah, um, and lucky. I think probably because this gets very little rain, so they didn't rot in mm -hmm. the rain. Yeah. Um, but that's my that's my shady area. Yeah, no, it's very nice. So this is the garden that I gained um, by putting in the rock wall, and um, what I put in was um, berberis, and I chose this color because I wanted a dark background so the colors would pop. Right. Um, when I planted these, they were like this. And so I pruned them um, quite specifically so that they would have long sweeps of branches. Mm -hmm. um, and it's worked because it, it, every year it gets higher and higher. Actually, now I have to prune it so that, because it's encroaching um, on my bed. So these are primarily uh, perennials. And um, before we talked about hydrangea, so there's a hydrangea here. Um, another one here that doesn't look great and then there's one over here in the corner so when they were planted all three of them were deep pink oh. so um, and they're called King George and as you can see even just from there to there the difference in the colors yeah, and I mean, even oh. on the plant itself there's you know a pretty pink so was that the original color kind of deep pink uh, like that? even even more pink Huh. And then the purples, and then there's a couple of blues in here as well. That is so odd. Yeah. yeah. And then some of the things, 
I didn't plant, like I didn't plant um, the Kirkosmia, but I love it because of the contrast of the colors. Um, no, it's so nice. there's a bit of a mishmash. I have a, a, a rose up in here. It's called um, Jacob's Robe, ah, um, which is a play on Joseph's coat. Um, Jacob's is called Jacob's Robe. Yes, because that's the the tr the uh, bush that Anne Friedank has, and she calls it Joseph's coat. And and um, I think. Uh, Jane put a flower in the parlor show and called it that. Okay. And the judges put a question mark next to the name. So oh, I'll have okay. to tell them that it's Jacob's robe. <laughs> I'm getting a cutting in the in the fall or whenever in the spring to, to start one. Well, it's, what's interesting, it's I've never seen it again. And I yeah. think because it has so many thorns, oh. but it's very prolific. So this um, ceanosis, when it's in bloom, it's all blue. And on the other side, I have another one. And it actually grows through the ceanosis. So that with the blue is, is just Is this the California beautiful. lilac? Yes. Oh, OK. Sorry, yeah, I just know the boring common names <laughs> or I make them up. OK, yeah, I can picture that. Yeah. yeah. So right now, it's looking a little tired because it's past. But uh, when it's in bloom, it's beautiful. And again, the bees love it. Right. Oh, so. yeah. And this, this rose that we were talking about, it's just stunning because it goes through so many different colors, yes. right? That's why they call it that. It's yes. beautiful. Yes. It really is a beautiful yeah. one if you can find it. Yeah. Yeah. And then these, unfortunately, they get so heavy because with our rain last week, they're yeah. not looking so great. But what this is, is a phlox. Oh, really? And it's called David. And I love it because it's that really pure white color. You know what I thought that was? I thought that was that really expensive hydrangea. Oh, like the Annabelle, yeah. I think it's called? Something like yeah. that. Yeah, no, that's no. beautiful. No. And then this uh, bush behind us, that's called Osmanthus. Um, it has beautiful white flowers in the springtime. I had one of these and I killed it. Yours looks great. <laughs> well, it was, it kind of limped along for the longest time and yeah. then I trimmed it, which was a mistake because now That's it's a I monster. Did. Oh, mine died. I trimmed it and it died. <laughs> and what I actually have started doing is creating like a little well for the roses because they needed better air circulation. So uh, yeah. that's why there's this little wow here. Mm -hmm. um, so there's probably what maybe three or four of these in here at least. Oh, eh? There's more than that. Yeah? There's quite a few. They've all melded together. Yeah. And these roses are called Altissimo and this year they're not doing that that well. Um, but my neighbor loves them because oh, you can put the color pops against the light color of the house. Yeah. Um, and she can see them from her deck over there. Yeah right. I have some lilies that are blooming. Um, they're a bit past, but um, I have a, an assortment of lilies. Yeah, I see that. So this is a bit of a mishmash. Love daisies, my favorite flower. Those actually, when they first come out, are yellow. Really? Um, it's called Moonlight, oh. and they're just beautiful. So I had the yellow daisies with the yellow lily up mm. above, and it was a really nice uh, color complement. So that's not a common Shasta daisy like no. the ones I have. It's something no. else. Oh. No. So these nice. Shasta daisies, I didn't plant those. Mm -hmm. um, and it was loaded in. It was up to here, but they're looking pretty sad. They look good to me. They're my favorites. And this is a Nile, something of the Nile. Yes, Lily of the Nile, Agapanthus. Yes. Uh, Ed's wife gave one to me, and uh, it bloomed this year. And yeah, this huge ball of purple flowers, fabulous. What's this? This one is called, it's an anemone. It's called September Charm. And I like it because it kind of dances in the breeze. Mm -hmm. um, and it produces for quite a long time, but it's, um, it spreads. So if you don't want it everywhere, you got to yeah. do lots of pulling out. I have a white one and I, I just love it because it does bloom later. So, yeah. What's this? Uh oh. Euonymus. I don't think that's how you pronounce it. Yes. But, but it's <laughs> called a pineapple lily. Oh. So it's a bulb, um, but it has multiplied. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and this will grow up about to here, and it'll be this big. Wow. And um, it's 
it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but I love, the, again, the color, that burgundy. Yeah. So uh, I like it with the contrast. This is all that's left of this little uh, gladiola. And I have a friend. Yes, the spider's spider. protecting it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have one lowly dahlia in here. But you see how it pops against the burgundy? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And then I do want to show you my dogwood. So this dogwood was absolutely stunning this year. Um, and you can tell by all of the fruit that's still showing. Every one of these was a white flower. And I think because um, our weather was so cool and rainy, it lasted so long. I think everyone's dogwoods did just beautifully this year. Um, so hopefully, it'll, I'll get it again. Yeah. Last year it didn't bloom very well at all, but I guess just different times and different seasons. Yeah, maybe they're cyclical too, yeah. who knows. Yeah, maybe like the apples. Yeah, yeah, could be. I am told that these are edible, but I don't want to eat them. <laughs> You've never tried it, eh? No. What are you supposed to do with them? Eat them raw or steam I them think or something? You, I, you know what? I don't know. Yeah. Don't try this at home. <laughs> I did look it up. They're not poisonous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think they're bitter. Okay. <laughs> Gracious. And then I have a heather that's coming. So it, yeah. it's not in bloom yet, but it's, there's it's potential. It's very close, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Bees love that too. And then I have some uh, double, double Shasta, Shasta Davies. Yeah. Very nice. But they're, they're on their last legs. Yeah. I've cut mine away already. Yeah. They're done. Lovely. Well, w are, shall we go look at your pots on the deck? Sure. Okay. So what I have growing here, um, through the the stone is creeping thyme and um it's really grown a lot like you can oh, see wow. it's like a yeah. real mat um so i do need to probably cut it back i am careful to step on the stones because Ooh. um in the springtime especially when this blooms it's like a carpet of pink and um, the bees love it. So that's actually why I step on the stones because I don't want to step on any of the, on bees. the bees. Now, how um, would you, if you were to trim that and you stuck the part that's trimmed in dirt, would it, would it grow, do you think? It might, because um, they're, these, it's worth a try. Oh. You're welcome to some. Oh, no, no, you, but I just wondered if that's how you propagate it or No, whatever. I no. grew, again, little, Little, ones little plants, over. and then I got some seed. Oh! So I mixed sand and soil together in between um, the cracks yeah. because it needs good drainage. Um, but uh, it's happy here. Yeah. And then it, what it's done is it's grown up into the garden and actually over the wall. Oh yeah! So that turns all pink too. Oh. So it's yeah. really pretty. Um, and these roses right now they don't look like much, but. Um, earlier in the year, um, they were much more beautiful. Um, then, so they all bloomed and then all the leaves fell off and then new leaves came, but the leaves are quite small and the new flowers are quite insignificant. They're a lot smaller. Um, well, they look really pretty to me. Oh, well, thank you. It's very delicate. My idea was to have a, a hedge. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe next year. So yeah. you, you'll trim those back in February or something? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So first um, I would just prune to remove any dead right. and then I would um, bring them back a little bit. These are Floribundas so they don't get pruned as hard as the hybrid teas do. Oh okay. So because they're you know they're thinner so. Right. Floribunda means many blooms but that's not what I'm getting <laughs> right now. <laughs> next year. <laughs> yes. Always next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this little section is um, part of my veggie garden. This actually used to be a parking lot oh. um, and my neighbor used to um, park his car here and so I decided to reclaim my land. Yeah, good girl. <laughs> um, so first I put the uh, planter boxes in um, and planted vegetables and then the deer discovered it. So <laughs> my husband went out and put fencing all around. Um, that wasn't enough, so we ended up building this arbor over here. Right. But um, it's kind of morphed into a bit of my dahlia bed. 
Um, and these are doing so well, I think, because they're in a raised bed um, and they're quite um, strong and established because they've been in the ground at least three or four years. Wow. So I don't lift my dahlias. Oh, I just girl. cross my fingers yeah. and um, hope with that you. they uh, survive. But this year they're doing really well. Now, you were scheduled to give us a talk this year about presenting things to the parlor show. Thank yes. you in advance for that. <laughs> and unfortunately, we've had to postpone that to next year. Can you give us any tips on what you do when you when you get your dahlias ready for a parlor show? Um, if I know there's going to be a show, um, I'll actually start to disbud them. So, for example, when you're showing a dahlia, this you'd actually have to break this off okay and you do it early so there's no scarring like the week before or something oh way before that oh, as soon really? as you saw the little bit of of new growth growing in here uh -huh. because when you show dahlias there's supposed to be two leaves oh, okay and a single bud it also helps to make the bloom bigger right. um so uh, so you, I don't always follow yeah. the rules yeah. <laughs> because I like lots of flowers. Um, so the, the big dahlia showers would maybe have one huge bloom, but then you have to time things really well. Right. Um, but so like this one, for example, here, you would take that, this piece off. Yeah. Um, and then you could cut it to here. And then you'd have yeah. three leaves. So yeah. when you were cutting them, you would want to cut them early in the morning, um, put them in hot water, uh, cut the stem on an angle, and let them rest for several hours in a cool place. Uh, usually I put them in the garage, and then they just perk up again. Huh. Okay. Um, and then they last a lot longer. Oh, One tip. little tip. Um, they do have hollow stems, and sometimes they flop over. I've been known to put a knitting needle or a skewer in the stem so that they'll stand upright. And you heard it here. <laughs> as long as the judges don't see it, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's like wiring something very carefully. Right. Um, one see. of the things we look at when we're looking at blooms is the back. Yeah. So if the leaves are starting to curl like these are, yeah. then we know it's starting to get a bit old. Ah. And they'll, you'll get points knocked off for and that. And you can't take that off, right? You can. You can, okay. You can. But you take the risk, if you take too many off, then the petals start to fall. Okay. So it's always a bit of a trade-off. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you see petals on the, on the table, it means that someone's done a little editing. Right. But okay. you're allowed to. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're gorgeous. So this one's actually called Otto's Thrill, and I love it. I love the colors, the Me peaches, too. and the yeah. oranges. This one was supposed to be the same. It was labeled the same, but yeah, it's quite different. It sure is, but um, it's nice. Yeah. There's a really gorgeous pink one over there. Yeah. That one is called Pat. Pat. Yes. Got a lot of short names, Ed. <laughs> so, and what's odd is when it's at its best, it still has a bit of a green ball, which is a negative. Okay. But when it's full and beautiful it comes all the way around then it wow. starts to lose its petals oh, so it's timing very close yeah. yeah and then I tried to put these in here just so I have some contrast yeah because um, I love that with the peaches and the peat yeah, it's and then I have lovely. another batch over here well let's go and have a look so this um, dahlia is a water lily dahlia oh yeah so you can see it's a slightly different style yeah. Um, I love the color. It's called Cameo. And then there's another little one in there. It's kind of lost. And it's called Lemon Drop. And it's a decorative. So it's a different style. Okay. Yeah, the petals kind of go that way rather yes. than this way. Yes. Yeah. And Same then color. so this is my little veggie garden. So I have actually three different kinds of potatoes. So one behind you there, mm -hmm. um, two here. Oh, yeah. And then my peas. So my peas, a bit strange this year. So I planted two kinds of peas. Mm -hmm. um, the first batch grew this high. And then the other ones are these here. Yeah. Same day. Isn't that weird? Um, yeah. So, you know. You'll and remember I what kind they are and yes. plant those again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
Aww. So I'm starting to get some pods. Lovely. Um, and then I have a little zucchini in here and um, my pole beans. My pole beans are doing really well. They are. We're starting to get some flowers. Yeah. Um, so I usually grow Vortex, which is over there, and my these favorite. are Blue Lake. So two quite different kinds of pole beans, but both are delicious. <laughs> and then I have some bush beans in here as well. I had to replant these because none of them um, sprouted, which is a bit hmm. odd. So these have been only about five weeks. Uh -huh. So that's why they're, um, they don't have any uh, flowers yet. Yeah, they'll, they'll catch up. Yes. Though. So There's my dahlias have sort of taken over by my, my vegetable garden. Yeah, I'm not sure I approve because, you know, I'm a veggie girl. So I don't know. I think you're going to have to plant some veggies somewhere else. Too. Well, I have a plan for where these dahlias might go. Okay. I'm thinking of um, a new space in my garden because I've sort of run out of space. Yeah, so, it happens. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it'll get lots of sun and the dahlias will be happy there. Good. And maybe a space for more, more, more new roses. Uh, yeah, well, I can see that. Lovely. Okay. So last year you gave me um, two plants and they did very well. You gave me some gooseberries. Yes. I um, haven't seen them. You're hiding them somewhere. They didn't overwinter. They don't, hon. You've got to put them in the house. I'll give well, you a new one. Okay. If I'd known, I would have brought you one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. We'll fix that. <laughs> yeah. And then we can talk about this. This, is, this arbor, uh, again, was to keep the deer out. In the springtime, it is loaded with roses and this beautiful clematis. This is a Montana. All you can see now is the seed heads. Is it that, that one there, that purple one? No, nope, that's, that's a different one. Else. That is oh, a Viticella. Okay. Oh. Um, that one gets cut to the ground every year. And it's, again, it's usually loaded, but that was a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. We've missed, um, missed some things, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. Lovely. And then a few more little roses that are nothing to speak of. And so there's a pear hiding in there. I only got one pear well, this year. Well, hold on to it because the squirrels are eating all of mine. So this is an espalier pear tree. Ah. So I have um, red Bartlett, oh. regular yellow Bartlett, and Bosch pear at the top. Oh. Last year I got over 27 pears. This year it's only one, so oh, it's really disappointing. Sake. I think it yeah. was about um, when it was in uh, in flower, it just didn't get pollinated. Yeah. And I think there's another had trouble with their fruit trees as well. Mm. Do you have those lizards here in V Royal? I do now. You only do now. The last they eat mason years. bees, my dear. Oh, do they? They do. Uh, okay. I know Anne Friedank and I do not have any mason bees because they eat them all. Oh. Um, yeah, so that's an issue with things that need to be pollinated earlier before the okay. before the regular bees show up and all the other bumblebees and things. So. I want to show you this tiny little uh, clematis. Um, I do belong to the Master Gardeners, and uh, one of our members passed away, and they had a sale um, of all several of her plants. And so I bought this. This was, um, it's called, I think it's Elizabeth Corning. Hmm. And so every time I see these little nodding flowers, I think of her. So it's a nice memory for me in, in yeah. the garden. Her name was Jenny English. And she was, uh, did a lot of work for the Master Gardeners. Oh, very good. Yeah. yeah. And then do you want to have a little look in my greenhouse? Well, why don't we have a look? Okay. Okay, so... Um, this greenhouse, my husband and I built this about 10 years ago. Um, it came as a kit, um, oh. about a thousand little pieces. Everyone was labeled, um, everything fit. Wow. Uh, the only thing we had to do, we had to put this in with a sledgehammer right. but, uh, to get the seed bench to fit. But um, to me, I can still smell the cedar and I love it. So it has a Dutch door, which I love. Yeah, and yeah. so um, most of the time right now, I keep this open just to keep the airflow going. Mm. So there is a vent in the bottom, and it has two um, vents that work on. It's actually a wax cylinder. Yes. Um, but it still gets pretty hot in here, so I also have a fan just to move the air. Um, so one of the things I learned about tomatoes is it doesn't set fruit 
um, over a certain temperature. I think, yeah, it's, I think 32 it's 30, yeah. 30 or 32 degrees. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually don't, I don't like tomatoes, yeah. but I show them. So I have lots of different kinds. I know um, you're a goofy broad, you know, Carol Ann. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my neighbors are happy. They yeah, come and pick. They are. Yeah. Um, the only time is like before a show, I'd actually put a little sign up and say, don't pick. I have uh, a show next week. So, right. so that I have enough. Because mm -hmm. um, most of these are, actually the fan just kicked on. Ah, uh, yeah, um, I hear it. Yeah. So it's pretty intensely planted. So I have three little sections in here. Mm -hmm. And I have five different types um, in each area. Do you have a black cherry? Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. Because that's my new favorite this year. I have to keep track. So I actually it's write it great. down so I know left to right which, wow. is, which is which. Doesn't it, isn't it hard to save seed from these things, though, if they're all in the same place? Don't they get mixed up with the, you know, That would mean saving seeds, I don't save seeds. You don't do that. Okay, no. never mind. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I well, also have, um, originally my plan was to have the seed bench here and just a planting bench on this side. Mm -hmm. And when we were about halfway through, I decided that I would like to have a place to sit. So in the wintertime, even if it's raining, it still can be bright in here, mm -hmm. and I can come out and have a cup of tea. Nice. So. And you can close this and keep the riffraff Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And this yeah. door as well. <laughs> Very nice. So it actually gets quite toasty in there. Oh, that's great. Lovely. That's great. I love that. Um, so this is the little seating area off of my kitchen, and this is where I spend a lot of time. Um, if it's nice, I'll eat my lunch outside, I'll eat my supper outside. Um, and the rest of the time I'm spending out in the garden. Of course. Um, I don't get sun here till about 12.30. Um, but what's interesting is even at 9 and, and 10 o'clock in the morning, the sun's shining here because it's coming over the house. So I have a collection of pots. Um, and then um, I used to get my baskets at Elk Lake, but they stopped making the moss baskets, so oh. I had the baskets, so I started making my own baskets. They're not as, you know, as wonderful as as the baskets you would get from the nursery, but... I don't know. I that don't looks know. pretty beautiful to me. This one I, is a yeah. real collection of different, um, different things. What I had a hard time with this year is because of COVID, you know, you were quite restricted to time and when you could go. Yeah. So I actually went shopping before a lot of things were in bloom. So mm. it doesn't always uh, result in what you think you're going to get. Right. So it's a bit of a hodgepodge. No, but it looks, um, it looks the great. one thing that I thought was really cool was this hanging. Um, it's a mint. It's called Indian mint. And I mm. bought it because it trailed. And it, it has, uh, if you want to smell that, sure. it has a really interesting scent. Yeah, it does. Almost eucalyptus -y mint. Yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. And then I have this monster rosemary. Um, this has because been here. you needed more. <laughs> this, this has been here like since I um, purchased the house and it has survived through snowstorms where the branches are broken on the ground and smashed. It responds really, really well to pruning. Ah. Um, and for me, this makes a great um, barrier mm -hmm. uh, between me and my neighbor's property. Right. So. Well, you know, if you watch Susan and John's eclectic garden, she has a very large one of these. And what she's done is she's planted her namesake, Black-Eyed Susan, around it, and it grows up in amongst oh, it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's pretty big, too. Not quite as big as that one, I don't yeah. think. Gorgeous. Anyways, so this is where I spend some of my downtime. Yeah. I don't blame you. It's just lovely. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Well, Carol Ann, you have an exceptionally beautiful garden, oh, and thank you. it's really interesting how there's little pockets of garden all the way around your interesting yard and lot. So you've done a lot of work, and, and it's just really beautiful. And oh. thank you so much. Oh, thank you for letting us come and and, and Janet have a look. brought me a gift. So thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. I hope it does well somewhere. Oh well, I think <laughs> perhaps I'll plant it by my new fence. There you go. And it'll have good. a great place to grow. Super, super.
Thanks so much, and we Thank hopefully you. we'll see you in the new year. Yes, at and I, um, I am the show coordinator for the View Royal Garden Club, so oh. we will have shows in the future. Good, and so I'll let everybody know when they are so we can all come to your show. Great. So, thanks very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.